Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Boric. We apologize. The last video did end a little bit short because we had technical difficulties, but we got in pretty much everything we wanted to get in there, minus our wrap-up points that we were going to wrap up around 20 minutes, and that's where we were at. I'm joined by the great Hector Superfan. Again, it's here we're going to give our stars of each team for Maine, the stars to look out for, and, of course, for our running Royals, who we think the stars are going to be of the series, as you can find out how we think the series is going to go. Uh, in the previous video, um, which I think you guys have a pretty good idea about who we picked for the series. But anyway, let's get right into it. If it came to Maine, uh, let's start in net. I feel like they're going to lean toward, even though Jeremy Berdour to me is a good goalie in the making, I think this year Lakers is the better goaltender. He won the goalie of the week uh, going into that week of the start of that main series of the four gamer. So, um, I think he's the move that I would imagine them starting with. But the thing that they have the beauty of having is really three starting level goaltenders because Callum Booth, who slides between Boston, is a starter level. Uh, Bredor is a starter level. And Lakers is a starter level. So in terms of goaltending, um, without Nagel, you might actually give Maine the nod in terms of duo because both of those guys are starter level. Well, I love Hawk, but... Like I said, I think Hawkey's a very good backup where Jeremy Brodeur would be a starter most games if he was on a different team. And then Lakish would be a starter most games if he was on a different team. They just happen to be on the same team, so that's why they're a perfect platoon. But uh, would you agree, it seems like from how the season went, Stefano's Lakish seems like that would be who they would lean towards most likely, Geit would lean towards to put in? Yeah, I could definitely agree with that one. And then... Um, as a whole, well, the biggest thing with the main Mariners you got to watch out for is, yes, Pesky's pretty good. They have young guys. They got Greenway that can beat you up a little bit. Uh, obviously, they got Doherty, who's their captain, who's fantastic, a guy that will beat up anybody as well. So you got to watch out for those guys on defense. But I would say Doherty and Malatesta are the two biggest to watch in the playoffs because Stars step their games up under the brightest lights. So Doherty's a round and pounding defenseman that also brings offense. You can't let him get in your head in the playoffs. And then Malatesta, you just can't let dominate you in the offense zone in the playoffs. Like he's had the ability to do against Schwab Revere, a couple games Maine's played them, against uh, Newfoundland even a couple games. They played them, who's one of the best teams in the league as well. They looked very good against those guys, both Doherty and Malatesta. So I think stopping those two on defense are the two biggest cogs you have to stop on defense. Unless if there's anybody else that you that kind of pops out to you that you think uh, has to be added to that. I can definitely agree with you. Those guys are definitely dangerous to watch out for. And then, off, well, offense. Offense, I don't think people that follow my channel are going to um, be too surprised who I say is one of the better. Yuri Leone does great against Redding, so I pointed that out in the video with Ryan. I think we have to watch out for him. But Nick Master obviously is one of the main guys you have to watch out for pascal laburge when those two are on the ice former flyers prospect former reading royal pascal LeBurge. uh you gotta watch out for um him because he's able to have a great shot able to get it off obviously cameron askew and shay so they got depth i think it was like 12 people or something like that when i did the video Ryan when i counted they have over 20 points <coughs> so just like the royals they have a lot of depth scoring but their scoring happens more um, in those dirty but good goals, I would say, where the Royals have more innate like hand, puck handling skills, so to speak, other than the Nick Masters and the Askews and Shays of the world that are just nuts and same with LeBurge. The rest of Maine is kind of those grit, gritster scorers where um, the Royals have more guys that I think have the deke ability. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays together. But... Uh, I don't know if you agree with or if you have any other guys like um, Bleakley or anybody that you think would also be a deterrent to the – not a deterrent, but a guy that the Royals should pinpoint to watch out for, I should say. No, I can definitely agree with you on that. Those, Like I said, those guys have been dangerous, you know. Like the whole team of Maine is dangerous. They're a very strong team. Yeah, they're a strong team. We talked about it in the previous video, so we won't go into this one. They're great on the PK, great on the special teams. you got to keep them off the special teams, but you'll find that out. Uh, check that out in the video that's going to be on the channel before this one. That is the playoff series preview with Ryan, where this is just our looks ahead to who we think the stars of the series are for both teams. 
uh, to look out for. For the Reading Royals, um, obviously in net, we know Logan Flodell is going to be the – that's ideally going to be who's the star going in, so we don't really have to touch on that. If you had to pick the defensive star, because it's hard. We have such a good defense between Sasir, Cockrell, Cormier, McKinnon, McNally, Millman. Who would you even pick going in as the guy that's likely to be the defensive star? Oh, definitely McNally. McNally. Because he's more experienced, it's just our defense is stacked. Like, yeah. I could see McNally playing great. I could see – like, that. that's a good problem to have when you're looking at your defense going, we have one of the better veteran defensemen in the entire ECHL and Patrick McNally, yet he might not be the guy you pick to say he's going to be the standout star of the postseason on your defense just because Mason Millman's a ridiculous budding uh, star and Will McKinnon – is because he's Millman. We know is going to probably be with Lehigh Valley next year. McKinnon's likely still going to be with the Royals. So McKinnon seems to be a budding star in this league, where Millman's going to soon quickly be rising up the ranks. So I think those two youngsters being mixed in is fantastic uh, for the Royals because they already have the veterans. Dominic Cormier is having a breakout year. Garrett Cockrell is one of the best defensemen in the ECHL and one of the more physical ones as well. So he brings that physical jamness that we talked about in the previous video. And then uh, Sasir is a guy that kind of keeps the game simple, never kind of overreacts to any situation guy or out there. So, like, they kind of have a perfect mix uh, with their defense. I would agree with you. I think going in on paper, McNally definitely is like a favorite to be the baller, and I think he's going to have a great series. To me, though, just because this kid, like, first impressions are key sometimes, right? And when you make as good of a first impression as Will McKinnon did, ragged on one of the best players the ice, uh, when we were playing Toledo, and then you continue to still stand up for your team with the best of them when you just met your team a month and a half ago. Uh, so, like, Will McKinnon, to me, is, like, I said it on the radio, recon, like, he's just a hockey, like, there's a saying, like, he's a hockey player, which is, like, for old school people, like, he's the old school. Like, he's just going to beat the living crap out of anybody that gets in his way. But he's also going to try to be as good as he can be at every facet while doing that. It's not like he's just going to be the old school punch everybody, but he's going to be a guy that can do that if he needs to. And then he's going to be great at every other facet as the uh, worker he is. Yeah, that's definitely agreeable. I can definitely agree with that. And then um, when it comes to forwards, again, I mean, well, well, first of all, we're not even just stack of defense. Like we talked about in the previous video, Kirk just did a great job of forming the team as a whole when it comes to scouting and developing talent. Between Bykoff, Kevin Conley, a great pickup late in the season, Cooper, Cressy, Dechara, Ebbing, Gooch, Hausinger, Lowe, Brad Morrison, the, lone, the, the, the two AHL contracts with Morrison and Saunier right now on the playoff roster, and then Jacob Pritchard. Uh, who would be, I mean, in that, you can't even necessarily label one guy because the the, the, the forwards are stacked. But um, who would be your guy to say, and then obviously I'll pick somebody else like I did for the other one because there's just so many great people to pick from. Ooh, I'm going to have to go with Gooch, the, the hat trick earlier this year. Gooch, yeah, both him and Ebbs had two. Yeah, he did year, have two. Oh, that's one, right. And one, and one was in the same game. It was that game that they went off, and it was one of the only times, if not the only time in history, that two guys had a hat trick in the same game. <laughs> That's right. It was it was Ebbs and uh, Gooch in that one same game. That they was did. definitely one of the most memorable moments of the. If we talk about memorable moments, it was that and beating Toledo in that um, weekend series when they just r railroaded Toledo in Toledo when the Royals were still really good then but they were still kind of finding their greatness they have to round out the season. And they went in, and that's really what I think showed the, the doubters, oh, no, this is for real this year. They are the top dogs of the East, at the very least, and are likely have a good chance to be the top dogs in general. Remember the last time the, the Royals played Maine in Reading? Uh, yes, yeah. They swept them at home. Oh, yeah. One of the but games I was in overtime. That's why with Toledo, like, it, that's, I think, going to be one of the best Kelly Cups of all time if that ends up happening because you, you already played them great on the road. But you they know did. In the playoffs, they swept them. Yeah. You know in the playoffs you're not going to sweep them because that, if that happens, that would be ridiculous because they're one of the better teams assembled, just like Kirk assembled one of the better teams assembled. So it would be nuts if one of those two teams just killed the other. 
But I think that would be a series that has the ability to go all games, the whole entire nine yeah. yards. You know, the, uh, or, or somebody wins one game shy uh, oh. where the Royals could then win in six, which I think would put them at home ice rather than because Toledo would still have the home ice advantage since they were the best team in the league oh. at that the point in game stinks. seven. Yeah. That's if we end up playing Toledo, though, because we talked about it through text. If we end up playing a couple other options, then we have the home ice advantage automatically. So yeah. if Toledo makes it, we don't. If Toledo doesn't make it, then the Royals, if they make it to the Kelly Cup, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But if they make it, they will have the uh, home ice advantage against anybody that's not the Wally. So, yeah. But for me, um, I'll pick since you picked uh, Gooch. <laughs> the obvious one. Um, I'll pick Patty. Uh, Patrick Bykoff to me Ooh. is um, one of the one nicest people you ever. Now, now everybody on the team is nice and an awesome guy, but like he's one of the most humble people you ever meet. That he thinks he's not great at things. He's just obviously fantastic at. Oh, he's um, a great all around nice guy. Where, where, yeah, where like. I love that about him, but also like like I remember we had a conversation about how good he was in the interview room, and he's like, I don't think I'm really that great at press conferences. I'm like, you're probably one of the best guys I've talked to in any level of players in press conferences. And he's like, oh, I appreciate that. like like he's just that humble that like he just doesn't want to acknowledge how good he is. because English is technically his second language since he's from Canada, but nobody would know that. So like it's um like like that's uh. That's kind of what it is with him. He, I love the fact of how good he is, but also I think the reason why Bykoff is just on the cusp of how good he is is that humbleness. When you're a star that also is innately humble, you're going to go places because you're never going to get too big of a hit. Yeah, that is true. Like, like you're never going to get to that where you're, you're just going to keep improving, and I wouldn't be surprised if he eventually ever gets a shot with the fans because if he continues to just go off and go off and then go from – where he was at this year to 30 goals in an ECHL season, 35 goals in an ECHL season, you would be stupid not to give him a chance. Yep. So, like, I would say he's probably going to have a chance down the line to play with uh, uh, Lehigh uh, if he stays in the organization. I don't see why Bykoff's not going to stay with the Royals. So, I would say he would have a shot at being one of those guys that flyers, just like they did with Hayden Hodgson, just like they did with Millman, kind of keep their eyes on as the time. And I think Pritch is one of those guys um that as well uh but pritch is a little bit older uh gooch is a little bit older but with how good trevor gooch is doing i don't know what like if if lehigh needs some which they do need somebody to the player profile of him if the royals win it all this year and he wants to still play next year and that's not like his big last hurrah and he says i'm just gonna go do a regular job now and everything if he wants to play in the ahl i'm all for the phantoms giving him an opportunity from the season he's had this season, I would be even though he might be an older guy to get an opportunity in terms of ECHL guys that eventually get AHL opportunities and maybe work their way up. I don't really look at it from an age thing. I look at it from you came out and from December onward, we're still finished as one of the leading point producers in the league and you didn't even play the entire season. You played from December onward, and it wasn't even all of December. It was like Christmas time <laughs> until the end of the season, and you still finish as one of the best offensive threats in the entire league. So to me, that deserves. Let's see what he can do in the AHL. But that's just me. Yeah, I can agree with that definitely. Also, Ebbs is another guy you could because Tomas Ebbing. The only reason I think Ebbing never got a look at a higher level consistently is he's just so good at structure of everything that he's not great at one thing. Where like sometimes those guys get overlooked because they're just. Guys that, like, he talked about it, how his dad beat it into him, like, you have to be great both ways. You're not going to make it if you're just an offensive dynamo because eventually that will catch up to you because you're not kind of – like, basically, like, he's not one of those level people. But what he is is one of the best, if not the best, two-way player in the game, in the ECHL. So you have that with the fact that this year he's having his best offensive season in his career. So if he continues to put the fact of being one of the best defensive players in the league combined with being then – a very good offensive player that then becomes one of the best two-way players in the league, which to me then, again, if Redding continues to do well, these are the veterans I think Lehigh should be giving chances to, not random guys they bring in from other organizations that they then play up the lineup and don't give a fair chance to guys that should be playing. 
they should be pulling from their own organization that has a lot of talent in the Royals and giving those veterans chances, in my own opinion. I think the Phantoms sometimes work backward. Yeah, I can definitely agree on that. But that's just that's – just, and also, obviously, I'm a little biased because I really represent these guys and support them, but I do think a lot of them deserve – just like Sonny had a good run with the Phantoms and they didn't send him down to the end of the season. They gave him as much leeway as possible. A lot more guys deserve that because – and Sonny deserved it as well because of the work ethic he had. But he just wasn't finding it this year in the AHL, and he found it as a bat out of hell in Reading and is the best player since coming down and has been a dynamo in each game. Yeah, definitely. But as we wrap up this one, as we went longer, we went about uh, 16 minutes on this one. We went 20 on the other, so we'll give you a good bit of content uh, for both. Uh, Hector, what's your series prediction game total? What do you have us in games? I have us winning four games to two. Four to two? Okay, I would say I'm leaning four to one because I think with our discipline, the Royals can just have main win it just one game because the only way I see it necessarily going four to two is if we have that mixed in game that we play out of our skates and don't play the Royals brand of hockey, which is structured physical when it needs to be, but really good puck management team that is very disciplined where if we start playing overly physical and get called for multiple things, I see it them winning two games in the series. If that doesn't happen, I honestly see Maine only winning one game because if you can keep them, like I said in the previous video, um, if you can keep them out of the uh, being on their power play, you're pretty much set. Yeah. Not You're not set in stone because Master LeBurge, Askew, uh, Leon, they're all great, but they're not. their team's not nearly as good 5-on-5 five five as they are power play. Yeah, definitely. I can agree on that. Yeah, so I would say so. But that's what we have. That's been our full about 17 minutes for you all. We have another 20-minute video that's going to be out That's out before this one. So if you didn't check that out before this one, definitely go back and check that one out as that's more of an in-depth playoff preview as a whole. This one's just on the stars that we think going in. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Hope to see you at the stadium tomorrow. The Royals are back in the playoffs, baby. The Kelly Cup final – or Kelly Cup final. Hopefully they'll be here soon. The Kelly Cup playoffs are here um, as we are entering them and finally don't have to deal with um, anything of things being – hopefully things being shut down, which was the big thing with the Royals. The Royals would have been a good team the last year that they were active. They were one of the better teams, and it was a shame when they got shut down. They could have even caught Newfoundland. Maybe, like I said, they were five points behind in the previous video. Now we finally get to see this team with Ebbing and Gooch still and others that were still there, but with even more talent that we talked about as well. That's even stacked the team even more than that previous team that Gooch and Ebbing talked about in the uh, presser for the pregame of the postseason. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. I thank Hector for joining. Uh, you can follow me at jjborick 26 um, is there anywhere that you wanted to give for people to follow you? No, no, no. It's all good. Um, I uh, hope. Thank you again for having me on the show. And uh, let's go Royals. Yep, go Royals. Let's start it off with a bang and get a win tomorrow against those Mariners. Peace out, everybody. Yeah. Please continue to subscribe down below to keep the channel growing. Really appreciate your guys' support this far.